My name is Ben White. Over the next 20 minutes, uh, as we work in this environment here, that's a bit futuristic, uh, it's a bit encapsulated, I, I want us to take time to set aside what's going out there, just forget about that for 20 minutes. Uh, perhaps you could think of this as a, a little bit of mental yoga. Okay, so we're gonna do a mental yoga exercise for the next 20 minutes, because I want us to think about possibilities. Okay, part of NAMA's, does anyone know the tagline for NAMA 2019? Does anyone know the tagline? Have you memorized the tagline? Okay, where people, product, and possibilities come together. Okay, now you know, so you'll get an A if anyone asks you, all right? So we're gonna spend a few minutes talking about possibilities this afternoon in regards to mobility. Who here is working on a laptop right now? Nobody, okay? We need to leverage the capabilities, the power of this thing, all right, to shape the future of the convenience services or the automated retail industry. When I started in the vending business in the mid-1990s, okay, long before there was an internet or 1990s, right, the 20th century, we wanted to leverage the power of data coming from vending machines. We knew if we could tell what was selling where, that we could increase sales dramatically at a, at a, at a machine, and we did, and we could increase efficiencies and routes, and we did. Okay, so I watched the, excuse the feedback there, I watched the first generation of technology grow up in the vending industry, and now I'm seeing the second generation taking off. And so I think it's important we, we contemplate what that's gonna look like and, and where we want this to go because the possibilities are tremendous. For those of you who remember 1976, and I guess there are a few here who do remember 1976, you are looking at the Cray-1 supercomputer. This was the most amazing machine that had ever been invented, and Mr. Cray became a gagillionaire, and there you go. That thing could compute at 160 megaflops a second. Now, what the heck is a megaflop? I don't know either, okay? But that's like what they use to measure computing speed, okay? This in my hand today, okay? This thing computes at 600 gigaflops a second, all right? So this thing is knocking the pants off of the Cray-1 supercomputer, all right? We've got power in our hands. I can't even fathom what this thing is going to be able to do, okay? Second of all, the networks are amazing. I, I, don't, I don't know about you guys, I have not been relying on Wi-Fi as much as I've been relying on my AT&T cell signal in here, because the signal's great, and my phone is faster uh, than who knows what. Look at this, in terms of 4G penetration, the United States is sixth on the list, right? India. One and a half billion people, 98% penetration of a 4G LTE network, okay? So we have, we have something with enough computing power and we got plenty of connection possibilities that this is, I mean, until they start putting it in our heads and I, maybe that's not too far away, I don't know. Uh, I told my kids, never put a computer chip inside your body, don't do that. Okay? But, uh, but I recognize that computer chips are going into everything. That is a thing. If, it's, if it is a thing, someone's trying to connect it to the internet and put a computer chip in it and have a talk. Why? Because it can do unbelievable things. My wife feels so empowered turning the lights on and off when I'm in the room and I can't control the lights and she can turn them on and off. Have you been doing that with your phone on the app? I mean, it's... It's amazing what the Internet of Things is going to bring us. So, specific to this industry, the automated retail industry, right? Whether people are creating micro markets or they're making pantries or they're filling vending machines or whatever they're doing, the operations that we're working with here, they do one thing. They take in bulk deliveries, okay? They take in tractor trailer loads of product X, Y, and Z, okay? And they take that bulk product and they break it down and they turn it into an order to be delivered to a point of sale somewhere the next day or 
this afternoon or whatever, okay? So I don't care what the widget is that they sell, and I don't care what kind of store they sell it in, they take it in in bulk, they rearrange it, they deliver it. That's a last mile delivery model. And I've met plenty of people here, you know, who've told me, I don't care what I sell. If I can put it on a truck and I can deliver it to a vending machine or a coffee station or a closet or whatever, and I can mark it up, outstanding. That's what I want to do. So mobile, taking the power of mobility, apps and being able to access your back end from anywhere in the world and being able to do all the work on your phone and see your business without having to be there. Um, I want us to think about how mobility changes our idea of what a territory is. Okay, so I'm running a last mile delivery business. Where does that last mile have to be? Does it have to be in my hometown? Or could that last mile be 800 miles from where I am? If I've got orders coming in in bulk or getting shipped already made as orders, how far can I ship those? By truck, by boat, by plane? Where can't I do business? So, I don't know, think about that for a second. H how does, what do you think of when you think of territory? What's your geography? What's your territory? What territory do you cover, sir? Global. That's right, global, absolutely. So there's no reason that any operation can't go global. And they're going to have to have whatever systems they need to run their business. You know, so everyone's gotta have a system. Okay, that system's here and in the cloud and everywhere. But it means that, like I say, I could have vending machines in Charleston, South Carolina I could have office coffee stations in New York City. I could work in Reston, Virginia. I, that's, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. How does mobility change our operational communication? Uh, actually, I'm very interested in this. So today, while you've been on the show, show four, how many of you have taken 15 phone calls? Raise a hand. How many of you have taken 15 phone calls today? How about 10? Has anyone taken 10, one, all right, so you've taken more than 10 phone calls today. How about five? How many? F couple, couple for five. Okay, the rest of us, less than five today, right? In all this communication that's going around everywhere. We are communicating through this thing. That's what we're doing. I, you know, personal relationships, family relationships, business relationships, it's this. So how does this change the way a delivery company can operate? Uh, I'll give you an example, and I will, yes, I will give you an example from uh, the software I represent. I'm working for Crane Connectivity Solutions, and we make software solutions for the automated retail industry. But our app has done something to bridge the gap between route personnel in vending and technicians in vending. It used to be, excuse me just a second here. Whoop. It used to be that Technicians would have to learn how to fix machines uh, kind of independent on their own. And then the route drivers, they'd be over here restocking machines, but if they saw something wrong, well, what did they do? Did they, did they write it down on their hand? Did they, I mean, okay, I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll remember when I get back to the office what machine was broken where. And then the, the route person gets back to the office and they have no idea where, what machine they were talking about. Our app allows a route person to put in a service call and communicate with the technician right while he's standing at the point of sale, right while he sees the problem. And that technician might be down the street, you know, needing work. I just finished up this call, oh my goodness, you know, it's a quarter of a mile away. The customer didn't even know the machine was broken. The route person let me know. Now I've got it fixed. The customer never even knew. Maybe I'm walking out the door and the customer says, hey, how's it going? And I say, oh, it's wonderful, it's perfect, everything's going great. I was just here to let you know that we care about your business. Thank you very much, walk out the door. That's, that's game changing in, in relationships and whatnot. So, I don't know, how else do you think mobility can change communication? I mean, we can communicate over distances instantly, right? Um, I had a friend of mine who lives in Peru. He told me about the Las Vegas shooting. 
before I knew about it. I wasn't in Las Vegas, I was on the East Coast. But somebody in Peru told me about something that happened in Las Vegas before I found out it happened. That's incredible, okay? And he texted me. That's how I knew. This, this stuff is going to change everything. For example, what if, okay, someone started manufacturing refrigerators that were not only connected, Internet of Things, of course it's connected, but maybe this refrigerator in someone's home is compartmentalized, okay? And that I could be delivering a compartment of produce or some other object, and I, people are using Ring, right? The, they let people into their homes and they watch them on cameras. I could start a service where I'm literally delivering fresh produce to someone's refrigerator in their house. And the, and the thing is communicating to me and letting me know when I need to go and how much I need to bring, et cetera, et cetera. What if, we open, what if mobility opened up the market to the automated retail industry into every single home? Every home or the marketplace? Who doesn't want to sell their item in every single home? So again, mobility, the possibilities are only begun, we're only beginning to explore the possibilities of that sort of thing. Uh, I've already had people at the booth come up to me and say, Ben, look, whatever functionality in your software you've got, I, I have to have it on this. It's got to be on this. I, that's all I got. That's what I'm carrying with me every day. And I want to communicate with my business more than just on the phone. I want to communicate with my business, or I want my business speaking to me in terms of data points and problems and alerts. I want my business communicating with me wherever I am and letting me know what's going on. What's, what's more important than my stores, my automated retail stores talking to me and telling me what they need? That is a power of mobility. That gives me the, the ability to grow my business wherever I want and however I want and and we can encourage more people to enter into this industry yeah. I enjoy seeing people here that I've seen for years it's lovely it's wonderful nice to see you but I really enjoy meeting new people even more the people I've met so far have said I'm new to this industry I'm thinking of buying a vending company I just bought a vending company I don't even know what to do I had a couple people come up to me uh, and they said, Is, does NAMA ever offer a class where you just teach the basic jargon terms of the industry? Because what is connectivity? What is a telemeter? What is this? What is that? The people don't know, right? You can't speak a language until you get vocabulary. You have to learn the vocabulary first. And it, we're going to offer something like that to get people interested in coming into this industry and supporting the growth of cool technologies like this, right? We're all in this together. I don't know if this thing has doors or not. We're all in this together, okay? And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with every one of you. I love this industry. I, I, I love the people in it. I love what it represents. I love providing convenient services. And uh, let's, let's work together to help everyone be successful, and we'll be successful too. All right? Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it.